as an instructor, what is the biggest challenge that you went through early on or what's still a challenge you, you go through today? Um, and what advice would you give somebody, you know, that's getting into teaching other people or working with people with dogs? The challenge for me, I think, has always been not giving too, too much. So giving the right amount and you have to read the person to know what the right amount is. I still find myself like at moments where I, I want to give them more, or I want them to want it more, or, or something like that, um, where I'll be focused on some detail and I need them to understand why it's important and they just don't care. And I'm yeah. like, but it's so important. And then I go back and have a conversation. Maybe it's not that important, you know, like this fucking final response right? we're talking about. Maybe it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> Driving myself crazy. So that's always a conversation I have about it. Is, you know, the way that I might feel about something is not the way that somebody else might feel about it. The things I might choose to care about, and, and we'll, you know, everybody's a little bit right. Yeah, it, it's, I, I, I loved that part I, where you say how much information to give. That's tough because, mm-hmm. like you said. You're a little bit the same, right? You're just oh, you're full man. of it and you love to give it and you've got, you're rich with this stuff, right? And so we got to read our audience once in a while. For sure, not saying it, you don't read your own. No, I and, I and I sometimes I don't, and and that's, or, like you said, being passionate about a topic that you're covering, um, makes it where you're you want to share all that information about that thing, and they're not ready for it yet. Yeah, you know, um, there might be one or two in the audience that are there with you. Um, it's tough because then added to it, and I know you've gone through this a little bit. When you're doing seminars, you have three days at best to be there, share, in many cases, tons of information, um, and and feel good about being able to walk away after that three days and go, okay, I left them with good Mm. info, Mm. um, or met their expectations. Mm. Because I know a lot of times when I go places... um, people will feel like they want to do certain things with their dogs. Maybe they want to do some really complex searches or whatever. And we have to spend more time on the basics. Uh, A lot of the things that they might deal with or that they bring up in conversation that they want to work on, I can look at and go, well, that's actually started way over here in your basics. So let's clean that up. So then there's not enough time, you know, and the importance of basics is something uh, there's that saying, you know, as you, you know, the, the master, the person, the more skilled you get over time, the more you care about the basics. But when you're first early on, all you care about is the advanced stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that's so true. Yeah. And as we travel and teach with others, people want to do what we all like, the cool stuff, mm. the challenging things. Mm. But, as an instructor now, I don't want to, there's certain times I want to set you up for a learning opportunity. Maybe a failure might come from that, but I don't want to do it unintentionally. I don't want to do it because you just want to go do this thing. And I can already see, yeah, how, so that for me has been something that's hard, you know, I've had to try to learn and regulate my passion. Mm. You know, that's a tough one, you know? It's uh... something I've gotten better at in the, in the same line of what I said earlier was letting people come to things themselves yes. a bit. And so um, I think the dog will give us permission to move forward with aspects of training. You can see they're ready for it. Like I, I can add this piece clearly. Um, and then, uh, but a lot of it when you're teaching others is most of it's about the, the person then like working with the people. And there's a, something cool about um, having enough certainty in yourself and, and you can feel kind of the wisdom internally like when I get it right when I like leave something alone a little bit or let somebody come to their own conclusions I'm, I'm always a little proud of myself like yeah. I could have tried to like give this to you or spoon feed it to you um, but I you know I went and touched you and like touched some place in you in the right way that inspired you to look a little deeper within your own framework yeah. or something and find it so I, I love yeah. what you just said there was the, uh, I heard you and Michael say the other day and I definitely, I have felt it. I follow it. I just didn't say it the way you did the dog giving you permission mm-hmm. to move forward. Yeah. Uh, we all 
uh, so many of us move forward at a pace that we we think or we see a couple wins and we're like, yes, let's go to the next step. We don't have permission yet. You know, the, the dog in many cases hasn't even reached proficiency yet, let alone fluency yet. Mm. And we get excited. I, I know I do. Um, to let's ooh, go here. Um, but when we realize we shouldn't gone there yet, now we've added something that we have to undo mm-hmm. and then reestablish and and it's that constant game. And that's and the, the the beauty of this is everybody goes through this yeah. in different ways and in different programs and stuff like that. But I love if we keep that mentality, we move forward when the dog gives us permission. Mm-hmm. That would if if that's our ethos and that's our shoreline, that's will guide us so much better. Cool to to do, yeah. you know. Um, I'm so you, I'm glad you like that. Yeah. Oh heck yeah! Because like I said, I, I've felt it, I've followed it, I've yeah. also lots of times not followed it. Yeah. You know, the excitement is what gets all of us sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, or internal competitiveness or mm-hmm. keeping up with the Joneses and you know other ones in my group or. That dog started at the same time me and my dog started, and look at them. Yeah, that's the that's the beauty. We just have to sometimes, you know, ego check ourselves and say, let's go at this pace. Um, but no, that was a beautiful thing to, um, like I said, when I got to watch you guys talk about training, you and Michael, um, how you guys both follow that principle, um, and that's a solid one. You know, that's the dog has to allow us and. We, once we do that, I know the success rate of what whatever we train will just well, yeah. for really the, grow. For, and for the end result, I'm looking for it's helpful yeah. like, to be get that if the dog is eager for the next thing or ready for it. Yeah, I'm a pretty conservative trainer too. I think sometimes to a fault, mm-hmm. and so um, you know the, the the balance between waiting around too long or something yeah. or, or pushing them forward is. I mean, that's just experience. That's just being in the game. Yeah. You know? It, it allows you to, uh, as a trainer, see around the corner of, Ooh. you know, preventing. Um, I stole that from uh, Marion, and he asked us the question, as a trainer, how do you see around the corner when you're working with students to help prevent um, mistakes from happening? Mm-hmm. And, you know, both my answer and Natalie's answer was by living it ourselves, you know, you've seen and you've made that mistake. You've gone through that. Um, so you can see these things ahead of time. You're like, ooh, I know if it's, we keep going that way. Mm-hmm. The possibility of X happening mm. uh, is there. So as a, if you're as a good instructor is to know when. Sometimes you need to let that happen. So you can, there can be a lesson learned. But sometimes you also have to help the human go, we don't want to do that because this is what might happen to the dog. Mm-hmm. And... So you, you're you using your wisdom and experience to share with others through your failures. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> Please remember to like and subscribe. And if you enjoy that video, we have lots more on our YouTube channel. Go check out Ford Canine on YouTube. Also, our Canines Talking Sense podcast. If you like it, we have videos of each podcast episode on here on YouTube. Or you can listen to our podcast on anywhere that you download and listen to your podcasts.